Hill hath no fury like a woman scorned, or in this case, the daughter of hatred. I am glad you're here to witness this train wreck of a project of me being very, very ambitious, thinking that I can actually uh, do something like this with a zero experience in the topic, and that being uh, painting a very dark and gothic -y figure. I am taking a very, very big detour to what I normally paint on this channel. You usually see me paint mostly anime and video game figures that are very, very colorful. I've never challenged myself to paint something this dark. And when Num Num Figures decided to release this model, I thought to myself, gee, I need that in my life because it looks badass. So I don't care if I don't know how to paint something like this, I'm gonna do it anyways. Now, I am not an original Diablo diehard fan, uh, but, but wait, before you say anything, before you say, hey, you're a poser. No, I'm not a poser, okay? I, I played, I tried to play the game, barely, about, about Diablo 2, like 10 years ago, um, but I didn't get to play it when it came out, so I don't have that emotional or nostalgic attachment to it, but I do have, you know, the attachment that it's a really good game. When Diablo 3 came out, I am not ashamed to say that I spent a good hundreds hours playing with my demon hunter and thoroughly enjoyed the storytelling, the gameplay, and all the good stuff, you know, but you it's a video game, it's a video game. You like video games. We all love video games here. So when Diablo 4 was announced, I was stoked to see what Blizzard would come up with after their thorough, disappointing announcement back at BlizzCon 2018. Did you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone, right? Enough chit chat, I know what you guys are here for. You guys are here for the fun stuff. You're not here to watch my face throughout this whole video. No, that will be for another time. <laughs> You are probably either counting the hours until the release of the game within a day or two after this video came out, or uh, you're already playing it and you decided to have like a little break and hop on YouTube and keep consuming D Diablo 4 stuff. Hopefully I caught you right before all that happens so I can keep your attention here and you can stay a while and listen. D or watch, you know, whatever. The Let's go! All right, just as I was finished printing all the pieces on my Ilahu Mars 3, I realized that I printed the right wing twice thinking it was the left one. So that's 14 hours wasted. Thanks a lot, brain, you dumbass. Anyways, this time around, I printed most of the parts completely hollow, but I did it so that the prints wouldn't fail so much. And while I hate printing them like that, they will be completely solid once I'm done with them. I left strategic holes in the parts, but I need to be sure to cover them up before I putty everything, and you'll see why in a bit. I also asked Lucia to help me separate the hands and the feet from the sculpt because it's easier for me to paint and detail them, unlike when the sleeves get in the way. So I did contact Nom Nom figures to see if they could do that for me originally, but they told me they were a bit too busy. So completely understandable. They weren't able to bring in and modify these pieces for me. But, uh, you know, it's it's great to have a friend that specializes in, in 3D sculpting as well. So thanks, Lucia. I had several failures and just took the copy that came out the most decent with only a slight print misalignment, which is an easy fix with putty and I don't have to waste more time in resin printing another one until it comes out successfully. I did print two heads. One was solid, the other one was hollow in different positions against the support because like I said, I was getting a lot of failures and both printed, but one looked better than the other one due to where the supports were located. So I guess the hollow version it is. the hang of 3D printing, but I'm still trying to define a specific method to my workflow while working with 3D prints. They're very similar to traditional GKs, but they have other issues to tackle, and that's to eliminate all the gaps between all the connections and 
get a tight snug fit but in order to do that I also need to seal off any cracks left from the printing because I need to fill these parts. The connection pegs on the wings are way too long and I need a deeper surface for the pins to attach to her back. So I'm shortening the pegs and thickening the connection holes on her back. I need to prepare the head for the end when I fuse it to the torso. That connection line needs to disappear and putty will help me now so that I just have a minimal line to fill later that translates to less sanding and less touch-ups. Once the putty work was finished, uh, now it's time to fill her up. To fill all the printed parts, including the base, I'm using Smooth On Smoothcast 305, which has a 9 minute pot life. Enough time that lets me pour in the resin inside the parts slowly in order to make them solid. But I'm still doing it in parts. And like I said, printed parts tend to have micro cracks sometimes and the resin started to leak. So I had to put on some tape on it to prevent the resin from spilling before it solidifies. Once all the parts were successfully filled, now I can start to work on them as I usually do with garage kits. I need to re-putty some areas to adjust them because I think I printed the pieces a little too thin and they might have warped slightly with the resin heating up when it was solidifying. Now that the base was rock solid, I can putty the socket to prepare to install a long ass pin that goes from the skirt through the leg into the rock. As I was working with the feet, I noticed that Num Num forgot to sculpt her foot with claws and not regular human nails as shown in the trailer. So I'm going to have to correct that by making them longer. Shame, shame, Num Num, shame, shame. 
Once finished with that, I continued to paint the rest of the parts, which honestly was easier to do now because it was filled with soft polyurethane resin instead of a solid 3D printed resin, which is super hard and brittle and I hate it. Call him, call him. All right, I had to bring out the big guns, I mean bits. Yes, I bought this long ass six inch <laughs> drill bit to get into those hide <laughs> to reach places. <laughs> oh, shut up, I'm on a roll. I was able to successfully drill through the three pieces to install that crucial pin to support everything. But while I did get all three aligned, the weight of the wings were now messing up the balance of the figure, and it was now swiveling and not resting where it's supposed to. I modified this model, and now I need to make sure I make adjustments to accommodate these modifications. To correct that, I added an additional pin that connects the bottom of the skirt into Diablo's skull, and that did the trick. I unfortunately couldn't print the base on my Mars 3. It was way too big, so I had to use a different printer for it, and it didn't print out very well, if you ask me honestly. Some of the supports got screwed over and it skewed the print ever so slightly, but you know, it happens. Honestly, I'd rather correct everything with putty than spend another fucking week printing everything again until I get something presentable. So nah, I'm not gonna deal with that. Just, just work with what I got here, work with what I got. I'm just making sure all the pieces connect correctly, and since this particular print didn't come out right, I'm going to have to grind down the areas that don't connect to get them to. Now that I had the pinholes for the figure, I can start to fuse all the parts together and make it look like a single piece. When I finished sanding most of the visible print lines, I added a light layer of primer to see what other areas need attention before I finish gluing and uniting the rest of the base parts. Then quickly send it off excess putty from the body to get it ready to receive its light layer of primer to also see if I need to correct any more imperfections left by the supports and the printer itself. And for those of you wondering how much this weighs now, it tips the scale at a whopping kilo or 2.2 pounds for you cavemen still living with the imperial system. Jeez, get with the program and join the rest of the world with our amazing metric system. Trust me, it's way easier than what you people use. I get so tired of having to do conversions for you Americans, honestly. Just, just save me the hassle and do it yourselves, okay? Tangent over. The sleeves look way better now that the misprint was corrected. Primer is a modeler's best friend and worst enemy. It's essential to get your paint to stick to the surface and give you an even covering. And at the same time, passive aggressively tells you how shit of a job you did in the prep stage and points out all the crap you missed making you go back and fix it. That's 
exactly the case here. There are some areas where the supports were located that need extra attention. I mean, I could ignore it like a lot of people do, but those people are usually not obsessed with the curse of perfectionism, knowing well that they will never achieve it, but you still keep on trying and trying and trying until you get old and die. My tombstone will read, Leona, a perfectionist that never achieved perfection. <clears throat> so yeah, primer, learn to love it. Try not to hate it. I usually leave bases for last as you've seen in my other videos, but we're gonna change the order a little bit here because it's not like I'm afraid to paint this figure. No, 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 no. I, my friend, am a professional and I fear nothing. No. I'm gonna do like a burning magma effect on this. I had this old can of black matte paint and decided to just finish it off. Also to save on time on airbrushing because this piece is massive. I've never attempted anything like this before and I'm not gonna lie, every time I step out of my comfort zone, I get a little panicky. I found a tutorial online of some of the miniature painters doing this and I hope I can replicate it on a larger scale. What I saw was basically layering several tones of white, yellow, orange, and red over a black base. So let's see how this goes. I think it looks okay-ish. Uh, it's not what I envisioned, but uh, close enough. Now I just need to add some dry brush to the edges and I guess it's done. I didn't really know how to go about painting Diablo's head, so I based the color palette off of the original Sideshow Collectibles version, so red it is.
It would have been ideal if the horns were separate parts from the actual head, uh, but I guess I have to make do with what I have and just mask the best as possible without creating a very noticeable change in the paint layering and get a stencil-like look when removing the plastic. Unfortunately, it did happen a little, but I made sure to go back and do some blendy blends and touch up those edges and finish off with some pastel shadings and dry brushing the horns. I don't know where to start to paint Lilith. I'm usually painting very colorful skin tones, but I've never done something in this style before. So I'm just coming up with ideas as I go. I'm doing this by instinct and going with a very pale buttermilk color base over some light gray pre-shadings. So far, so good, I think. I'm using that same base color for the inner membranes of her wings. Again, I've never done anything like this before and I'm just doing things that kind of feel right. I'm sure it will all look wrong in the end. All right, real talk here. Uh, I know these segments are rare in between my videos, but hey, uh, this is this is part of keeping it real here as, as a model painter so I'm just gonna say this I just finished painting the skin tone but I'm not really sure how to approach <laughs> the rest of her uh, now I, I actually can't really focus on how to do this because my comfort zone has always been bright and and colorful figures and all of a sudden be thrown into out of my comfort zone and into this gothy dark uh, themed figure is 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 throwing me way way off so I actually even have to get reference like print out references now this is actually the sideshow collectibles uh, Lilith figure, uh, but I just basically printed out uh, references so that I can get an idea on what type of colors I can use uh, to paint her. I'm not gonna lie, I am scared shitless of ruining this. <laughs> and I, I don't know where we are gonna go from here, but mm, I guess there's a first time for everything and I'm just gonna say uh, I am completely out of my comfort zone right now, right now. <laughs> so, uh, let's see how this goes. Mm, fun. When I was beginning to paint this kit, there were no clear references for Lilith because the game hadn't been released yet. I hate working on kits that have little to no references I could use because I strive to make everything as accurate as possible color-wise. The only existing visual reference I had was again 
Sideshow's very stylized version of their Statue of Lilith. And I decided to take some inspiration from that and, and, and try to not go into this fully blind. What I did appreciate from their version was that her attire has a lot of browns, blacks, and grays, and that's what I'll try to work with with my version. As always, I want to thank all my patrons for their invaluable support. You guys make these videos happen, and I want to personally thank Begenthal Lokasen, Ed Demokels, Janet Mies, Kamia, Abby Diogardi, Bizbot, Blue Wing 212, Laria Yuki, Amy Kindle, Sean Kirkpatrick, Elizabeth Romero, Kyo, Muffin and Zeko, Nastin, KitKat, Yaza05, Gabriel Johansson, Kimberly M. Sheldon, Neil Mixcat, Madison Rivera, Indigo Mar, Sugar Miller, Noko, KL Mir, Uramus, Damus, Aisha Lee, Grim Thanatos, Alexandra Metheny, Mac or Macked Out, Fiora Lily, Euphemus, Sage Rosado, Thymeria Townsend, Mandy Gordon, SK Lamfer, Meg Scrabble, Walnutty, Rini B, Yas Queen, Kiki, Cannoli Rose, Nikki, Allison Metallium, Chaos Kitty, Fake It Till You Make It Mom, Pika Chica, Blah, It's Me, Catsy, Bacon D Eggs, Shisei Delani, Janet, Evelyn Cole, Boixies, I Muse, and Laura Chan. If you'd like to be part of the Resin Monkey Army, consider becoming a patron. We have monthly meetups and a dedicated Discord server where you can interact with other like minded peeps. You also get access to exclusive content and projects that I'm doing behind the scenes. And that's just to name a few perks. This is one of the most detailed models I've worked on. It's great and I love it, but I hate it because the workflow for this will be very slow. I need to add pastels to shade areas, then mask those shaded parts to paint the rest of the section, and then mask again to shade again, and <laughs> you get the idea. So let's go. <laughs>
I'm going to try to attempt and make the wings look translucent without really being it. While there were some slight tear contours on the wings, I'm making the appearance of more masking over certain areas with liquid masking even though nothing's really there. Lots of liquid masking will be used on this kit, so let's not forget to get Lilith her spa day in this process. At least one of us is gonna get some. The spa day, I mean. First layer of masking done, I can continue with the wings. I'm not even sure if the colors I'm using will work. I am just praying that what I'm doing is going in the right direction. The structure of the wings won't exactly be black, but a mix of green, brown, and black. Time to continue painting the next layer of the skirt and the sleeves with some black and grays. I'm doing a burgundy base color for her horns. It will be covered later, but I still want some of that tone to come through the lower layer of the base once done. Second round of shading. I am trying to achieve some additional dimension to those membrane tears, and to do that, I'm adding more pastels to them. The sculpt has a ton of texture on the skirt and I want to bring out that detail up and distinguish it 
on the surface. To do that, I'm going to do some additional dry brushing. I know the camera has a hard time capturing that on screen, but you can see it easily here on the sleeves. I want to do more crease effects on the membrane where it doesn't really exist physically. To emulate that, I'm using enamel paint over lacquer. They're easy to remove with thinner and it doesn't affect the paint beneath. And so far, I am not entirely happy with it, but it's better than I thought it would end up looking given my inexperience with this type of sculpt. When the second layer of masking was done, I can follow up with the browns on the top of her skirt. Now that the wings were almost fully done, all I needed to do was check how these membrane tears looked and I wasn't completely satisfied with how bright they looked and I proceeded to add more pastels to darken them just a smidge more. And just as I did with Diablo's skull, I also added some black dry brush to Lilith's headpiece. I don't do a lot of dry brushing, but it's times like these when I work with different than normal kits that actually merit this technique that I have the most fun doing. This kit is full of texture and it's very pleasing to see all that detail pop as soon as I dry brush on the highlights. Now to finish off masking the last bits of these parts. I've been using liquid masking because everything was very organic in shape. This is the only moment I actually had to bring out my masking tape for straight sharp lines.
want the armor pieces to look different than the top of the skirt. To do that, I decided to go with a terracotta color to distinguish it from the rest of the browns. Now here's the thing, since I didn't have any clear references of Lilith's model, I went with gold for her armor. Don't give me that shit that, oh, there were tons of references, you didn't look hard enough. Nobody really knew how Lilith actually looked like at that point in time because the game hadn't been released yet and Blizzard was just giving us tiny bits of visuals in the teasers and trailers. It also didn't help that my boyfriend, who is the diehard fan in this household, uh, didn't tell me that there was gonna be an open beta for Diablo 4. Had I known, I would have pre-ordered a damn copy and played it so that I can have actual references for Lilith because nobody knew what she actually looked like before that. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, honey. What would I do without you? A week later after I painted the damn armor, the open beta launch and that's when I saw the full model for the first time in game. It was too late. I wasn't gonna go back and repaint these parts. So while it's not supposed to look gold, I'm leaving it that way because Deckard can't be damned if I'm going to go through masking hell again. Rant over. I know you guys love watching unmasking the bit, so here are some shots of me removing the latex masking on the skirt. Unfortunately, as it sometimes happens, I'll occasionally get paint stripping on certain parts. But this time, it was actually my fault. I didn't wait long enough for the gold paint to fully dry and cure, so I basically stripped all the gold off. But the other parts, I don't know why I got paint stripping on the brown area. So I guess we'll have to go through masking hell once again. This time, I masked off the immediate areas that needed attention with some sticky tech because fuck liquid masking. Alright, let's pray to the resin gods that the masking this time will not strip away more of my precious paint. So far, so good. Nope, 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 abort, 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 put it back, put it back. I managed to see paint stripping just a bit, so this time I made sure to leave the paint to dry overnight before I removed the masking because hell nah bra, not again. <laughs> Let's continue with the rest of the parts, shall we?
Once all the masking is off, I can proceed to do the tedious work of touching up all the edges where the masking was placed because, yay, liquid masking is so accurate. I've never painted bone before and while the skull was okay, it lacked detail compared to the rest of the model. I don't know what happened there. I guess they got tired of adding so much detail to other things. But nonetheless, I will do the same as I did with the wings. And I thought, what better reference to have than an actual life-size skull? Compliments of my fallen enemies. <laughs> I know this is just a little part of the kit, you barely even see it. While I know my paint job is not perfect, I always try to make it as close to that by painting details like this to the rest of her body parts like her nails and claws too. Because nothing says I want to compensate for my lack in painting skills by adding details to other places to distract you from my poor paint job. While the masking didn't give me crisp lines due to the sticky tack, I can always go back and paint on some black outlines to give it a bit more depth and clean up the gold a bit. While the face did have a very prominent color change due to the masking between the face and the horns, 
I can always go back in and dry brush the skin onto the bits where the horns begin and blend those colors to make the transition more organic without having to airbrush the whole area again. And to prepare to finish off the face, I make sure to add more shades in the areas where it needs it more and bring out those facial features particular to her. Now let's give a face to this daughter of hatred. While her scleras are black, you can still see that she has heterochromia. She has one blue eye and one brownish eye that later turned out to be more grayish, but again, I didn't have clear references until I saw her in game and it was too late by then. So this will have to do. Now that the face was done, I can attach the head to the torso and begin to work on removing that connection line. I already explained several times how to do this in other videos, so be sure to check out my recent ones for that reference. And with that, she's finally done. I hope you enjoyed this train wreck of a video. Uh, this was originally going to be a collab between a fellow YouTuber and me, unfortunately, due to personal circumstances, I think on both ends, uh, it wasn't able to actually come to fruition. However, I don't discard the possibility of doing it you know, actually successfully doing a collab with my fellow YouTuber here, which I'm not going to say who it is because I am not going to hear the end of it from all of you people. Uh, they will bring out their video one day and uh, when they do, uh, hopefully uh, you guys will understand by then. And while this video was indeed a very, very large, big tangent uh, to the content that I usually bring out in my channel, do not worry because my regularly scheduled program will continue this month with two, not just one, not two, but three, three videos this month counting this one, uh, you will get two very special videos this month to celebrate the premiere of Sailor Moon Cosmos. Yes, uh, we're going back to my roots here and we are going to do something really special. I say we because I think you're gonna be part of this too. A lot of people have asked me the same question over the years and it's always, how did you get into the hobby? The answer to that question has a lot of twists and turns and it's long as shit. And I think it merits a proper story time video where I repaint the first ever figure I did 
17 years ago. And while I'm at it, trauma dump on all of you that decide to stay and watch. If you've ever wanted to know more about me, <laughs> that's gonna be your chance. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment on this video so that the algorithm can catch it and recommend it to more uh, Diablo fans or just more people that like this type of content. And if you haven't subscribed, honestly, what the hell are you waiting for? It's free. You're not getting charged nothing to subscribe. Plus, you take me closer to that 100k milestone. So. Help a girl out, okay? Help a girl out. I bring out, you know, I think fun and entertaining content. The least you could do is, is scratch me back while I scratch your, your, you know. If you're just as excited as me to play Diablo 4, well, I hope we can meet sometime in game. If not, if you're not a fan and if you really don't care and you're just here for the paint stuff, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. For now, let's hail the creator of sanctuary, the daughter of hatred, hail Lilith. be beautiful in sin. <laughs>